Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled his people, but in the future, he will honor all of his people. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So, this is what you want me to tell him. The people, your people who have lived in dark exile all these many years with their, their backs up against some Babylonian wall. It was one thing when you had me tell the king that a, a virgin would give birth. Go back to sleep, my dear. Talking to God. <laughs> what do you mean? Is he listening? Well, are you listening to him? You see what I mean, Lord? <laughs> Even my own wife questions me. Now, you are God Almighty. You do what you want to do. But you want me to tell the people that Messiah is going to be just uh, some plain fellow like one of us? That he's going to suffer? He's going to die? Why not Moses to lead us out of exile? Or, uh, or King David, the mighty warrior, not some tiny little... little talking about, Lord, we are a people in darkness, stumbling around, stubbing our toe on the sin of the world. We need a mighty rescuer. We need, uh, we need a savior. Not some tiny little... Ah. Such a tiny flame. And the whole room is filled with light. Ah. I am a man of unclean lips. Forgive me, Lord. I will tell them what you have shown me, even if I don't understand it. I will trust you, good Lord, in your own good time to, to bring us uh, Emmanuel, to bring us light and hope. Mm. Light and hope. I'm coming back to bed.
There's Isaiah, deep in the night, hearing from the Lord. Did you notice, uh, great, great acting there, that Isaiah was not all that excited to deliver some of the messages that he had. Isaiah didn't always deliver good news. And even when he did deliver good news, but he seemed uh, to feel like it wasn't good enough news. He recognized that God's people were in a very difficult spot uh, between a rock and a hard place. And they needed some great hope. He said they needed a mighty Savior. And God promised through Isaiah that he would send a baby to fix the problems. That didn't seem to foot the bill. It didn't seem to be a big enough solution to the problem. So how do we handle it as God comes to our challenges? This video records for us uh, Isaiah receiving in, uh, some of Isaiah chapter 7. And it's written out for you in your notes. It says this, And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out and meet Ahaz, who, by the way, was the king. You and Jerjishabub, your son. He said, Take your son with you. Uh, by the way, I have a note. we put a note in there for you. His son's name means a remnant shall remain. So God says, take your son, not because he's supposed to say anything, but maybe give him a name tag that says that you've even named your son, that there is hope for God's people, that they are not all going to be destroyed, but that a remnant would remain. What a prophetic act as he named his son. It says at the end of the conduit of the upper road on the highway to the washer's field. So that's where you're going to find King Ahaz. And he says, say to him, be careful, be quiet. And then he says, do not fear. And do not let your heart be faint because of those two smoldering stumps of firebrands, the fierce anger of Rezin of Syria and the son of Remaliah. King Ahaz was in charge of the nation of Judah. He was supposed to be a brave and valiant leader. And you have in your notes, it says this, Ahaz, fight or flight, or, they have on the screen, cower and cave. That was King Ahaz's deal as the great king. He liked to cower and cave. His solution wasn't trusting in the Lord. His solution wasn't trusting the words of the prophet Isaiah who said, God has a plan to rescue your people. Ahaz looked at the situation he was facing. His enemies in Israel to the south of him. Uh, his enemies in Syria uh, to the northwest seemed too big for him to handle. Instead of trusting in God, he said, no, what we should do is we should cower, we should cave to our enemies' demands and go out and sign a treaty with them that basically meant the end of us as God's people. Basically meant we would have, the God's people would have to, to bow down to foreign gods and worship them instead of worshiping the Lord Almighty, the one who in the words of Isaiah promised that he would send a Savior shortly. That before this child was to be born, the problem would have gone away. Ahaz didn't want to heed those words, and so Ahaz miraculously made things much, much worse. And the incredible good news for us, even in Ahaz's story, is that God didn't leave his people. God continued to be there. Matter of fact, he even left Isaiah there to keep giving them hope. Keep reminding them that they have a reason to trust in him. But because of Ahaz's lack of faith, his people ended up ultimately in exile. They were taken away from their homeland. They were taken away from all of the things that they knew. And that's where some of these words come from that we often take a look at in the beginning of December. We started off our service this morning with an ancient song entitled, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's an ancient song. But even more ancient than the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, are those words. The song is a collection of quotes from the prophet Isaiah, all based around the name of the Redeemer. The name of Jesus, Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And those words were all put together into a hymn that we often sing at this time of year. But it's a hymn that looks forward to rescue. It reminds us that Ahaz and his buddies weren't the only ones who got carted off into exile. 
That sometimes in our own life, we feel like we have been separated from God's goodness. We feel like we've been separated from his care and from his provision for us. So you have in your notes an empty blank. So it's like Ahaz, I am frightened by what? Maybe it's on the tip of your tongue. Maybe you could write a whole list. Maybe we should have added a couple extra pages there for you to write down the things you are frightened of. I could write down a, a whole list myself. Pretty soon we're going to have a baby. That's very scary to me personally. <laughs> I haven't done this in 10 years. More frightening baby to break me. A little bit. Me. <laughs> There's lots of things that frighten us. Even in the holidays, it's supposed to be a season of cheer, and yet there are about a thousand things that steal our joy and steal our cheer. Maybe we're afraid of things that, that need to be done. Maybe we're afraid of how we're going to be able to provide gifts for our family or our friends. We've been blessed to partner with Sheepfold and bring gifts to those who have truly nothing this holiday season. But maybe we have fears of our own. Isaiah chapter 53 records an incredible prophecy about Jesus that's something we hear more around the time of Easter, more around the time of not Black Friday, but Good Friday, the day that Jesus gave his life for us, as it records really terrible things about Jesus' life. It says in Isaiah 53, it says, Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. He was cut off from the land of the living. Those are prophetic words from Isaiah 53. But you know, long before anybody realized that those words were about Jesus, God's people, the Jewish nation, identified themselves when they heard those words. They said God is describing the difficulties that we are experiencing, oftentimes not in spite of being God's people, but for the very fact that we are God's people. Maybe you can identify with some of those words from Isaiah 53. To talk about suffering, to talk about despair, to talk about difficulty. Maybe you identify with those words. So the question for us is, what are our troubles that seem too big to fight? What are our troubles that seem like this news that a child is going to be born don't seem to quite meet up? with the difficulties that we have in our life. Isaiah had, or Ahaz had warring nations around him. And here comes Isaiah with the wonderful news that a baby's going to be born. And Ahaz is going, how is that going to help my problem? It seems too small. And so Ahaz went to work negotiating some other solution. So the question for us as we prepare for Christmas is, how do we negotiate with our problems Instead of trusting in the Lord, what deals are we trying to make with ourselves? What deals are we trying to make with someone else instead of trusting in God's provision and God's care for us? Next slide says this, an audacious hope. In Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. If you haven't caught on in the book of Isaiah, names are super important. And just to make you know, life as a follower of Jesus more difficult, nobody seems to translate these in the book. Right? You need Google, you need a, a dictionary of the Bible to look these names up and to see what they mean. But Emmanuel is one of the most powerful names we ever hear of Jesus in the entire scripture. It's only recorded twice. Recorded here in Isaiah. And Matthew notes that it gets fulfilled with the birth of Jesus at Christmas. That when Jesus is born, God truly lives with his people. But even before we get to see Jesus in the manger, and reminded this morning that we have Jesus in the midst of us, as he says he is with us in this meal, that God has also promised to be with his people. And there is no better news. There is no greater help for anything in our life than to know that God has promised whatever happens, he is there in the midst of us. I use this word audacious on purpose. If you look it up, audacious can mean showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. That's what audacious can mean. The second definition for audacious from Webster's Dictionary also says showing an imprudent lack of respect. Was Isaiah showing an imprudent lack of respect for Ahaz 
when he said, don't worry about your problems, there's a baby on the way. No. But Isaiah was, I think, showing an imprudent lack of respect for the problems of the world because although the rest of us see them as being insurmountable, God sees them as being tiny because he is so powerful over them that even his little baby boy is able to squash whatever the difficulties the world can throw at us. Isaiah occupies this incredible place in history. This is over 700 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah wrote down these words. Incredible. Biblical scholars, uh, J. Barton Payne has an encyclopedia of biblical prophecy. He notes 574 times in the Old Testament that is prophesied that Jesus would come and be our Savior. Many of those are in the book of Isaiah. Walter Kaiser, a PhD, former president of a seminary, identified 65 direct predictions, 65 markers of who the Messiah would be, and Jesus fulfilled every single one of those. Again, many of them from the book of Isaiah. Incredible the hope we have to see that God keeps his promises, that he really did send his own son into the world for us. A greater hope than we could ever imagine. Incredible to know that God says, whatever your problems are, God says, I personally am going to come and take care of them for you. Incredible. Indeed, that child brings peace. Beautifully portrayed in our video how that little tiny lamp, right, a tiny flame, all of a sudden lights up the room. Reminded that that tiny birth of Jesus brings peace to the whole world. Isaiah chapter 9, he says this, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. If you're walking in darkness right now, Jesus is good news for you. He brings light into your world. He says, On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has gone. He says, For us a child is born, a son is given. Not just a baby, but look what the baby would grow to be. He says, The government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Reminded of what Jesus would endure for us. He would come and live amongst us in our world. He would experience the same pains, the same darkness, the same difficulties that you do. The only difference being that he would overcome them for your sake. Yes, Isaiah 53 records awful things that maybe we identify with. But most incredibly, Jesus identifies with those words. They predict his, not only his birth in the stable, but also his death for us on the cross. That he would do something greater than just deliver God's people for a generation or for a particular period of time or overcome a certain enemy. He would overcome the greatest enemy, death itself. And lead us, as he says, in the path to life. Life everlasting. That because Jesus has come, there is always a reason for us to have joy. I want to close. We read these words at the beginning of our service from Isaiah uh, chapter 61. Uh, but I want to encourage you to take a look at them again. It says this. By the way, Jesus read these words when he started his ministry. He went to, to synagogue one Saturday morning and opened up the scroll of Isaiah. And he started to read these words. He said, God has sent me to spine up the brokenhearted. To proclaim freedom for the captives and release for darkness from the prisoners. To provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And people responded by saying, Therefore, I delight greatly in my Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. Whatever it is that we're facing, it may seem insurmountable, but remember that nothing is insurmountable with Jesus. Let's close a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, that you came to Isaiah, that you have come to many others and given them that word of hope about your son, Jesus Christ, who was to be born. We give you thanks, Lord, that we look forward to Christmas, that we have so much to celebrate, not just trees and gifts and food, but Lord, we have life everlasting. Because of the one who came in the manger. Lord, prepare our hearts to rejoice this season. Regardless of what may come around us, 
but because we know that you are greater than all of the things that stand against us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, we continue with our offerings. As you prepare to do that, I encourage you to take out your connection cards and your bulletins. Uh, if you have filled those out, you can place those in the offering basket as it comes around. Uh, let us know that you're here with us. Uh, if you're a guest or visitor, let me send you a present and say thank you for being here. But we need your address to do that. Uh, even an uh, email address, we can uh, send you a gift that way as well. Uh, also, we have an email that goes out every week, know what's going on here in our congregation. Uh, a couple of announcements about uh, offering, not just do we receive offerings, uh, at Edgewater we're also committed deeply to giving offerings. Uh, one of those things is indeed to see in the back a bunch of gifts. Uh, Lisa is back there, she can help you if you'd like to be uh, part of that. But we have a partnership with an organization called The Sheepfold. It is a shelter for women and children uh, who have experienced domestic violence and abuse. And we're excited for helping them provide Christmas this year. Uh, if you've brought gifts, uh, you can return them today. If you still need to get them in, we'd love to have them by Wednesday uh, so we can get them over to the sheepfold this week. They want to kind of make sure they got enough for everyone. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to be a part of that, right to, I believe we have a couple more uh, children and maybe even a mom uh, to provide for. If you'd like to be a part of that, you can talk to Lisa.